Hello friends, Big Fat Jenkins here bringing you another Dota 2 video on behalf of Dota Alchemy and in this video we're going to be talking about five game-breaking things that you can do with your backpack in Dota 2 that you should know. And this is a video concept that I originally made for Pugna, but with Pugna resting in pepperonis unfortunately, I thought that it would be a decent idea to update the list and do it for Dota Alchemy. The backpack is a perfect example of one of those seemingly simple mechanics that is crucial to understand in Dota at a high level if you want to be a strong Dota player like last hitting. You can get last hitting, but then you can understand all the nuances of it, and understanding all the nuances of it is going to make you a far stronger player than just kind of getting the idea behind it. In fact, I'd argue that it's almost impossible to play Dota at a truly high level if you don't understand how to effectively use the backpack to its fullest capacity. And I think that's true about a lot of seemingly simple mechanics in Dota. Let me explain by kind of getting into a concept that I've personally been tackling in my own Dota play. In my What Separates a Herald from a Pro video, I essentially talk about the fact that the better and better you get at Dota and the better opponents you play against, your opponents are essentially going to do largely the same things, but just faster. You will eventually take a tower, but it will just be the same tower, but faster. So with that being said, focusing on doing things in game as optimally as possible using all the small tricks that you can is not only going to allow you to play faster, but also force the enemy team to play faster if they want to deal with you. So that's how you're going to gain a lot of MMR. On top of that, if you play fast enough, if you're taking advantage of a hero's strengths that other heroes do not have, then you are essentially going to force the enemy team to react to you, but because that's that hero's strength, they probably won't be able to react to you. So if you just have a winning draft, you will win a game. So with that being said, what are five tricks that you can do with your backpack to drastically change your gameplay? Trick number one, you can use your backpack to store components to either Tranquil Boots or Eon Disc and use those items when you actually want to use them as opposed to letting them just proc naturally. So to give you a concrete example, let's say this Bane is in a team fight and I have an Eon Disc and he uses Brain Sap on me. That's going to proc my Eon Disc. That's not very useful because this has a hard purge associated with it. It also makes me immune. So you would want to use this on something that is going to screw up the enemy team's team fight. So let's say he uses Fiend's Grip on me. That's when I, what I would do is I would click Unlock Combining on the component of Eon Disc that I had in my inventory that was locked, and it will combine. As long as a component of it is your inventory, it will all combine into your inventory and be the full Eon Disc, and you can use it at like 30% HP instead of 70, because 70 is kind of high. It's kind of useless at 70% HP. You can use it when you get Ravage, when you get Fiend's Grip, when you get Chronosphere. You can basically use it to completely decimate the enemy team in a team fight, and if you do that once, that can win you a game. So to give you another example of this, let's say you're Axe and you're jungling. Obviously the time that it takes you to run between camps, that matters because it's going to determine how fast you farm. Uh, you want regen because you're taking damage from creeps. You want to be at high HP so that way you don't get ganked. Uh, so the problem with this is that Broken Tranquil Boots give you less movement speed than Brown Boots plus Wind Lace, and they give you less regen than just Ring of Regen. They give you zero regen. So if I'm tanking this camp, I can use the movement speed to kind of kite around if there's a stack or something like that, and then I can use the regen and have it so that these components are not locked combining, but the boots are, and then as I run between the camp, I unlock combining. As I'm about to hit this camp, I disassemble it. I run into the camp, and then as I'm killing the camp, I unlock combining on the wind lace and the ring of regen, so that way all I need to do when I finish this camp is to unlock combining on the boots, and then I continue doing this and I move between camps. So this is something that I've actually seen Demon use to essentially avoid getting the Tranquil Boots broken, and he gets away from a gank uh, in one of his stream replays. And it was awesome, because it, if he didn't do it, he literally would have died. So that's a lot harder to do, but in terms of just using it to jungle a lot faster, it has a huge effect, and it's quite easy to do, because you can just do the disassembling and stuff as you're killing the camp. Trick number two, use your backpack to store bottles, clarities, and healing salves. So the main reason for this is because a lot of heroes in Dota are very regen dependent, but before there were backpacks, 
they sucked because they did not have the regen and they did not have the slots to build into regen. They needed to go for other items. And Axe is a great example of this. However, because of the backpack, you can just store a bunch of clarities in your backpack. If you're Pudge, if you're Phoenix, any hero who uses a lot of HP, you can store healing salves in your backpack and you will never need to go back to base or use shrines. And for bottle, there are a lot of really good late game uses of a bottle where you don't have the slots regularly to carry it. So if you take a a bounty run, for example, and you wait for the next minute, you get more gold from it. You can fill up a bottle, which gives you regen. If you get a, uh, once 40 minutes passes, two runes spawn. So it's very likely that you're going to get a DD at an important time in the game, or a haste rune, or an arcane rune. And if you have a bottle, you can either use that or give it to somebody to use. And the backpack is the perfect opportunity to have the slots available for these items. Trick number three, you can put your tranquil boots in your backpack and incur that six second cooldown as opposed to taking a 13 second cooldown of it being broken when you're tanking creep. So to give you an example, let's say you wanna go jungle, I can just move the tranquil boots into my backpack and then out, it's gonna incur that six second cooldown. And then by the time that I kill this camp, I'm gonna have the tranquil boots available and it's essentially as if the tranquil boots didn't break at all, like they just can't break. Uh, the only problem with this is when you put the tranquil boots into your backpack or they're on cooldown, you lose the movement speed as well. So you only want to do this in scenarios where you don't care if you're going to die, you don't think you're going to die because you're like cutting a wave and by the time the enemies get to you, they're, your tranquil boots are going to be off cooldown or if you just feel immortal, like if you're really strong or if you're jungling where they're not going to kill you, then there's no point in not doing this because it's six seconds versus 13 seconds. If you do this like five times in a game, that's 20 something seconds extra of regen and extra movement speed that you're getting that you otherwise wouldn't. Trick number four, you can use your backpack to store a low charge raindrop to eventually build into an urn. And this is something that is very effective for support heroes, especially a hero like Pudge, where you don't get that much gold, but you eventually want to build into an urn because you love the mana regen, you just love everything that an urn does. So uh, consider the following example. Let's say we have an infused raindrop that costed us what? 225 gold, something like that. Uh, so uh, let's say a support, you know, uses a nuke on us a couple of times. We will turn on, we will refresh this. So now it's got three charges. So what is that worth? This is worth three out of five times 225. So what, like 175 gold, something like that. Um, and then let's say we get nuked again. And then one more time, we'll refresh. Now this is basically a worthless item. Um, if you want a raindrop, you probably don't want to use this charge. You probably just want to get another one because if you're going to use this one, you'll probably use more. So what do you do? You put it in your backpack. Support uses nuke on you. It doesn't proc it. But then eventually I can spend this, you know, 50 gold item, essentially 50 something gold item. I'm not going to do the math on a full urn. This is a very efficient usage of gold, especially on a support hero who likes to build into an urn. Trick number five, you can use your backpack to store items while you regen such that you regen more once the items come off cooldown in your backpack. So, so essentially in Dota, the way mana and health gain works is that if you gain a certain amount of health or mana and you had 90% health or mana before, you will have 90% health or mana afterwards. So essentially what that means is if you gain 20,000 mana and you had 100 and you are at 100% mana, uh, before, you, you will have 20,100 mana once you gain that mana just because it takes the percentage and not the actual amount. And the reason this is important is because almost every form of regen in Dota has a static amount associated with it. Shrines give you a percentage and then a static amount on top of it. The thing is wrong. Uh, Fountain gives you a percentage. Unfortunately, that's the only thing. But Bottle gives you a static amount. Salve gives you a static amount. Clarity gives you a static amount. So basically, anytime you are getting regen, you should put your items into your backpack. So let's say we do it like this. And then you Bottle. You can see that we get 35 regen no matter what. So if we put this in here, it's still uh, gonna be 35 regen plus the nine that we get from the Scythe of Ice. So yeah, 35 regen plus nine, 
So it doesn't change, except this increases our mana pool by a significant amount. So you're actually losing mana if you keep these items in your inventory. So what you want to do is just put them all into your backpack, use the regen, and then as you're regening, you want to just move them in, incur that cooldown, and uh, that way you're going to get more bang for your buck for all of your regen. So that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I do genuinely appreciate it, and I hope to see you in another video.